Today we're going to look at the Core Ultra 9 285K. They recently came out with a new BIOS update uh, called the 200S Boost. All right, let's get to it. All right, so the first benchmark that I did was Cyberpunk 2077 using the benchmark tool. Had an ultra preset. Scaling's off, no RT, no frame gen. And these are the average FPS results plus the 1% lows. All right, so this is the pre BIOS update using version A71. And then the post BIOS update is the A73. At 1080p, we're at 169.8 versus 183.6, 1% lows of 100.2 versus 116.5. So we've got a 16.3% difference in the 1% lows and 8.1% difference in the average frames. And at 1440p, we're at 145.7 frames versus 151.2. 1% lows are at 103.1 versus 150.3. Huge difference there. And so we're at 45.8% difference in the 1% lows at 1440p and a gain of about 3.8% at 1440p on average FPS. And at 4K, we're at 74.6 frames a second versus 75.2. And at the 1% lows, we're at 54.5 versus 55.7. So 2.2% difference on the 1% lows and 0.1% on the average FPS. So not a whole lot of difference there at 4K. Then on Black Myth Wukong's benchmark tool, we've got it on very high preset. Scaling's minimized on TSR. No ray tracing, no frame gen. And so we're at 134.3 versus 134.7 at 1080p, 90.8 versus 105.8 on the 1% lows, 122.8 at 1440p versus 124.1, 78 on the 1% lows versus 96.9. At 4K, we're at 107.5 versus 107.3. And 1% lows, 63.7 versus 75.1. So at 1080p, our 1% low differences, we've got a gain of about 16.5%. And on the average frame rates, not really any gain. On 1440p, we've got a 24.2% gain on the 1% lows and a 1.1% gain on the frames. 4K, we're at 17.9% gain on the 1% lows and no gain on the frames. All right, Starfield was an interesting result. I had it on ultra preset, no scaling, no RT, no frame gen. And as you can see here, we've got a kind of a difference. And so we'll talk about that in my final thoughts. But Right here, we've got 121.8 versus 136.2 at 1080p, with 1% 1 lows at 84.9 versus 80.6. 1440p, we're at 118.2 versus 117.9, and 1% 1 lows of 84.6 versus 73.7. At 4K, we're at 91.8 versus 91.2. And 1% 1 lows at 62.1 versus 69.5. And so we've got at 1% lows at 1080p, we've got a, we lost 5.1% of performance there, but we gained in overall frames at 11.8. And then at 1440p, we lost 12.9% at 1% lows, and we lost about 0.3% on the average frames, which is negligible enough for it to be called a run variance. 4K, we gained 11.9% on the 1% lows and lost about 0.6% on average frames. But again, probably possibly another run variance there. On the Blender benchmark, we did an overall gain, not a large amount of gain, but enough to talk about. So. We've got uh, the Blender version 4.4.0, samples per minute, and the CPU test. I only did the CPU tests because when I started running the GPU test, 
I noticed that the results were pretty much the same. All right, so on Monster, we got 263.6 samples per minute versus 269.1. On Junk Shop, we got 165.3 versus 173.9. And on Classroom, 132.6 versus 134 straight. Which means that on Monster, we got a gain of about a little over 2%. We got a gain of a little over 5% on Junk Shop and a little over 1% on Classroom. Okay, and then on Cinebench uh, R23, Synthetic Benchmark. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> I know I said thread there. It, it's supposed to say core, uh, so single and multi-core. Sorry about the misprint there. If there's any confusion, you know, you, you could just flip me off or something. I don't know. Uh, so the multi-core. Results, 42.145 was the score before the update. And then 41.488 was the score. And I ran these a couple of times just to confirm. And yeah, the, the score was measurably lower than before the update, but not enough to be concerned with considering that, you know, anything below 2%. I, I have to question on whether or not it's going to be a run variance thing. But, you know, and we got a zero gain on the single core at 2346 versus 2345. Interestingly enough, uh, I took a look at what the package temperature was for the CPU at the time of each run and how many watts were used. We were at 81C on the multi core using 272.3 watts. We're at 81.5C on the multi-core after the BIOS update, but we're using measurably less wattage at 264.4 watts, which could have been the reason why we've got that variance there between the scores. Maybe something was going on in the background there. I don't know. But similarly, we've got 67C versus 69C on the single core at Utilization of 93.6 watts before the BIOS update, 81.7 watts usage for the same score after the BIOS update. So I found that pretty interesting too, because that's what, a good 12% maybe? Here, let's do the math. We're at what, 12.5? seven percent lower wattage usage so that's that's actually pretty good well, while we're at it let's let's do that one and a 2.9 percent lower usage on the multi-core so enough to talk about yeah that's that was pretty interesting. For video production, I used the Shotcut Video Editor. I did a 20 minute long video and a five minute long video with five filters, the exact same filters on the exact same video. Before the BIOS update, we exported that video at nine minutes, 45 seconds. Whereas after the update, we did it in nine minutes, 56 seconds. So a loss of 1.9% in performance there. On the five minute, uh, video it took two minutes 28 seconds to export that video versus two minutes 34 seconds after the bios update so a loss of 3.9 percent all right so those are the results as you can tell there's not a huge amount of gain it's a little bit of gain uh the most beneficial part that i saw was in the one percent lows on at least for Cyberpunk 2077 and uh, Black Myth Wukong. Starfield was, it was almost like a, it was almost like a opposite effect on Starfield than the other two games, which was kind of weird and kind of interesting at the same time. Uh, I'm not sure what that reason is, but Starfield is kind of a wonky game. So, you know, who knows what the reason is behind that. Uh, Bethesda, 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 
sometimes I have a hard time with words. Bethesda really kind of screw the pooch on on that game. Uh, you know, it's it's actually an overall fun game, but you know that's maybe for another video. Uh, in the meantime, the other interesting thing was, and it's kind of a crappy way for them to roll it out, but they made it so that you you won't even see the ability to hit that boost for that CPU if your RAM isn't at least 8,000 mega transfers a second or 8,000 megahertz. Yeah, that's, you, you need 8,000 megahertz or 8,000 mega transfers. I can't remember which. It's one of those two. Uh, in order for it to even show up after it. So if you do the BIOS update and you try to enable that with less than 8,000, then it won't even show up as a selectable thing in BIOS. So in easy mode, it shows up on the left-hand side uh, along with the CPU boost stuff and all the other stuff like the memory try it and all that stuff that's in there. It was interesting, but Come on, it was a little boring too, right? I mean, uh, the 285K is nothing to uh, scream home about. It's great for some productivity stuff. I might try that uh, 9950X3D. I just, uh, I, I bought one uh, a little while ago when it first rolled out and I still haven't even opened that box up yet or run tests or anything with that CPU. But yeah, I... I might have to take a look at that 9950X3D and maybe I'll use that for my productivity stuff. Or I might just use the 9950X3D for benchmarking because then I won't have to keep going back and forth on different platforms because it's like one of the top rated CPUs for productivity and one of the top rated CPUs for gaming. So as an overall CPU, that might be the way I, I, I might go. I might start testing everything with the 9950X3D. Uh, let me know down in the comments what you think about that, on whether or not I should do both productivity and gaming benchmarks on just the 9950X3D rather than using two to three different platforms to test out different things. So. Yeah, let me know. Uh, I'm curious to know what you guys think about that idea. And let me know what you think about this results. Is it surprising? Is it not surprising? Is it disappointing? Uh, you know, rumor has it that they're probably going to abandon the LGA 1851 socket system. But they, there's also been talk that they're going to do a refresh on the CPUs because, you know, nobody's buying them because... You know, they're not all that great. Although I hear the 265K is actually a pretty decent performer versus its price. So, you know, but then again, if they're going to abandon the LGA 1851 socket, then what's the point in investing in that CPU? Unless you're looking to upgrade, it's not a bad price point, the 265K right now. And you, you don't have to get like a Z890 motherboard. You can get uh, like a B860 motherboard for cheaper. Maybe it's a big enough upgrade that you don't have to worry about upgrading your platform for the next five, six years, right? So it might not be a bad investment. Depends on the situation that you yourself are in on whether or not it makes sense and that was the the results so thanks for joining me and if you got any questions or comments or suggestions or anything uh, feel free to write them down in the comments if you found this kind of test interesting or uh, you enjoyed the content of the video uh, please feel free to hit that like and subscribe button it helps out the channel a ton in the meantime, thanks for joining me and hope to see you in the next one.